I don't know where Puffy was. I never saw him after we left the hospital. I can only imagine he was probably shocked and terrified. None of us knew where he was. Probably somewhere on his knees, sucking on the Clive Davis. I don't hear nobody out there. Lulu right up under me. Something not right. He's not feeling well. I don't know what the deal is, but he haven't been feeling well. He's been very clingy for the past couple of days. I don't know why, but he's been very clingy. Yeah, anyway, y'all gonna show me some mercy until we get this dog a CPAP. I know this, Frenchies also um, communicate with snoring too. Lulu. Y'all just sh just show us some mercy, all right? Continue reading Keep the Faith by Faith Evans. One of you guys in the comments was like, I, want, I don't want this book to never end. Me neither. But when y'all find out what the next book is, ooh, the paying members already know. You other bitches, y'all gonna have to wait. It was Big's Night. The DJ was playing Big's new song on repeat. It was Hypnotize, a simmering track with a rich bass line and an infectious hook. Every time the song came on, everyone in the venue just started nodding and singing along to the chorus. It seemed like the crowd really was hypnotized. Y'all going to Andre's party, one guy asked. Where is it, I asked. Up in the Hollywood Hills, he said, y'all can follow us. I told the driver to follow the car and we began to file out of the parking structure and up to the hills. It only takes a split second for your life to be changed, even if you have no idea that it's happening at the time. On God. On God. As our car climbed the Hollywood Hills, I laughed and joked with my girls, not knowing that my world would never be quite the same again. And it wasn't just my world. My daughter, four years old, was 3,000 miles away with my family, while my son, just four months old, was a few miles away with Tony's mom. Their lives were changed forever at that moment, too. And it wasn't just our lives that had changed. Hip hop music had been forever altered in that moment. The music industry would never be the same. Violence and hip hop were about to be linked together in a massive media event that would have reverberations for years. A violent crime had been committed as our car climbed those hills one that would not be solved immediately. As you read these words, I am still trying to piece together what happened that night and find out who was responsible. And I am still trying to bring those people to justice. There's so much I wish I could tell that younger version of myself. The young mother of two driving with her friends to an after party. She had no idea that at that moment her husband's chest had been cut open. His heart was being massaged in an effort to get it beating again. As she sat in the front seat watching the scene rush past her window, she didn't know that her son was in the process of losing his father and that her daughter was losing a stepdad she loved and she was about to be thrust into the spotlight to handle things the best way she could. She had no idea what kind of grief awaited her. I was numb. I sat on the small hard chair in an antiseptic waiting room at Cedar Sinai and cried my eyes out. The rings that I'd torn off my fingers in a panic scattered on the floor around me. Who bought you here? Puff asked me in a soft voice. Roz, I told him. 
Puff left to find her and brought her into the waiting room. She came over to where I sat and helped me stand up. Roz, they won't let me see him. I know, Faye, she said, hugging me tight. Come on, we have to get out of here. Roz, I can't leave. I can't leave big here. Why can't I just see him? Come on, Faye, she urged. I let her lead me out of the hospital, right through the same doors I'd come in. When I got to my hotel room, it immediately began to fill up with my friends, Roz and Tony and Big's friends, most of whom had been with Big when he died. Damien was there as well as C's and Gutter. I don't know where Puffy was. I never saw him after we left the hospital. I can only imagine he was probably shocked and terrified. None of us knew where he was. Probably somewhere on his knees, sucking on the Clive Davis, begging him to make sure that Biggie don't die, cause then both of us gonna lose a whole lot of money. My room quickly became command central. I kept moving, trying to just focus on taking the next breath and trying to get to the next moment without breaking down. Of course, the first thing we all did was try to figure out who did this. Is this about Tupac? Tony asked. Would niggas really kill Big over that? I don't think this is about Tupac, I said. People know Big had nothing to do with him getting killed. Well, then what the F, someone said. We continued to talk, cry, and connect for hours trying to figure out what went wrong. I got a call from Todd. He was in the area and wanted to come by to check on me. I told him to please come through. The room started to get really crowded. I ended up talking in the bathroom with D-Brock. Yo, I got a friend coming through here, I told him. Damien nodded and passed me the blunt that he just finished rolling. Look, he's from out here, but he's cool people. He's really been good to me. It's all good, Faye. I started to cry. Damien comforted me. Everybody know you had love for Big. Don't even trip over that shit. See, you know what? Ah, yikes. See, I don't... Uh, see, I don't know how I feel about Faith. Faith having Todd to come through to comfort her. I mean, even though they're not together, I don't know how I feel about that. I think I probably would have waited for everyone to leave. Because, I don't know. I don't know if that was cool. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Faith. I think you should maybe wait. You know, just just wait a little bit. Todd gonna be there. He fuck with Todd you. Todd was me and Captain save -a Like, I don't know. Am I tripping for feeling this way about Todd? It was... Uh, I, I can't put it in words. Like, the timing just seems off. So, anyway, I don't know if I would have had him to come through in that moment. Hi, Todd, I said. We hugged briefly. I just wanted to check on you, he said. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Thank you, I said. It was awkward. I had been looking forward to seeing Todd that night. I wanted him to know that I really liked him and was hoping we could see where our feelings might take us. But the timing just kept being off. In Atlanta, he had to walk by and see me hugged up with Big. Exactly. You no, know, on the inside that you have feelings for this man. It's like, even though everybody else don't know, I just feel like the inside of you should have been like, ah, uh, I don't think this is appropriate because suppose somebody can read our energy. Her husband just died and here go her next husband. In Atlanta, he had to walk by and see me hugged up with Big. And now I was completely on another planet. It was good to know that he understood. He just waiting in line, Faith. It ain't understanding. He understand that he got to wait in line. Just let me know if you need anything, he said. And I mean that. Todd stuck around as a few people went back to their own hotel rooms. Then he got up and prepared to leave as well. Don't go, 
I told him, I know you have a lot going on right now, he said. I don't want to dot, dot, dot. Please, I said, please don't leave. I can't stay here alone. Todd stayed with me a little longer. I knew I had a tough time ahead of me. I felt so vulnerable and alone that I needed the comfort of a friend. Later that morning, I had to call Miss Wallace. I wanted out of Los Angeles as fast as possible, but I knew we'd have to make arrangements to have Big's body flown out to New York. I had to find out the steps to take to make that happen. I was a little bit overwhelmed. After making a few calls, I learned that the first thing to do was to identify Big's body at the city morgue in Los Angeles. When Miss Wallace arrived at the hotel, we hugged and cried together. Jan was standing right next to her with tears streaming down her face. I reached out and took her hand and squeezed it. I'd never gotten to know Jan. We very rarely crossed paths and she'd always kept a low profile. But any difference we may have had melted away as soon as I saw her. I knew what she'd meant to Big, and she was the mother of his daughter he was absolutely crazy about. Most of the people from New York who had come out for the Soul Train Awards were already back home the morning after Big was killed. There was a lot of fear and uneasiness about what was going on. I wanted to run away and just bury my head under a pillow. I wanted someone to comfort me, hold me, and tell me everything was okay. Well, that's why Todd was there. Okay. I didn't have the option. I needed to be all those things for Miss Wallace and Jan, the same way they were for me. After they got settled into their hotel rooms, I arranged for a car to take us to the morgue to identify Big's body. How could this happen, Faith? She yelled out as we drove. Where was all that damn security? All I could do was shake my head. They definitely had security with them, I told her. I'm sure of it. So how did this happen? In front of all those people? I have no idea, I said. Miss Wallace sucked her teeth and rolled her eyes. Where the hell is Puffy? Somewhere sucking Clive Davis, praying to the, praying to the white devil. I'm not sure. I think he went back to New York. Not here. What do you mean he's not here? My son was killed and he left. Miss Wallace, you got to understand things are really crazy right now. Miss Wallace sucked her teeth again. My son is gone. Someone better have some answers for me. Do you know if he was in any pain, Jan asked softly. I don't I, know, I said. I could only imagine if the bullet ricocheted throughout his body the way the doctor described at the hospital. He must have been in pain. But I couldn't bring myself to tell Jan and Miss Wallace died. Miss Wallace began to cry hysterically. Jan and I tried to comfort her. Her cries grew louder and she continued to yell out. I don't know for sure. That could be someone else. That's him, Miss Wallace, Jan whispered. That's him. No, she said, shaking her head vigorously. How do you know? Miss Wallace looked over at me. Faith, she asked. I nodded, it's him. I said. Miss Wallace, that's Christopher. Hey, do my favorite go go song. <clears throat> Taking a ride on the east side, made a left on MLK. What a beautiful day, what a beautiful day. Riding high on the west side, looking for a hood where to play. Won't you come out and play? Won't you come out and play? Hey, taking the ride. Mm. Hey, hey, on the side, side. Ooh, ooh. Hey, 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 hey. We like that. Oh, good. Say what? <laughs>